This video is a continuation of the RTCR Level 1 Assessment Tutorial. You will be guided through the Part 4 Assessment Questions on Treatment, which is Section E. Please turn to Part 4, Section E, if you are not already there. The first question asks if there have been interruptions in any treatment process in the 30 days prior. This includes your disinfection system and or other types of treatment, such as a softener. For non-community systems, you may have a UV light or a chlorinator for disinfection. You should be checking often if your disinfection system is working. A UV light should have a method to visually check operations, such as an intensity meter. UV lights are also required to have an automatic water shutoff valve when the unit is not operating. This stops the flow of water throughout the building. If you have a chlorinator, do you know if it was not operational for any length of time? Were you still providing water during this time? For this first question, also consider if your softener or a specific iron removal system has been down. If you have any of these, of course. If these break down, it can negatively impact your disinfection system. Check yes if you know of an interruption in any treatment process in the 30 days prior to triggering. The second question asks if there have been any changes to any treatment process. Perhaps you've added a softener or had to install a different disinfection system. These are all things that should be considered. Incorrect installations can lead to cross connections or perhaps your change in treatment is not effective. Check yes if any of these apply. The third question asks, does water quality data collected at the treatment plant within 30 days prior to the assessment being triggered indicate inadequate and or inappropriate treatment of water? This question is asking about water quality data at the treatment plant. Community systems collect entry point chlorine residual data that would be used to answer this question. Some systems also collect turbidity and pH measurements at the entry point to the distribution. For non-community systems watching this tutorial, you probably don't have any additional data that you collect just after your treatment equipment. You would check NA for this. But if you were previously required to install 4-log disinfection, then you'll have entry point chlorine data. In this case, check the trend of your daily chlorine data. You should already have been aware of any time it dipped below your permitted level. The fourth question asks, are all treatment processes being maintained and operational? A UV light gradually loses its intensity over time and must be replaced when it falls below a certain intensity level. Follow the manufacturer's requirements. The quartz sleeve in the UV system must also be cleaned according to the manufacturer's requirements. Chlorinators need to be maintained. There can be problems with the motor or valves and O-rings getting dirty and worn. Also, the pump must be calibrated according to the manufacturer's maintenance schedule. If you have a softener, are you keeping up with the maintenance and addition of the salt? Check no if you determine that you have not kept up with the maintenance and the operation of your treatment system. The last question in this section asks, are all treatment drain lines and monitoring equipment waste lines equipped with an air gap? This is very important and often not correctly set up. For example, if you have a softener, there is a waste line for the backwash water. This line goes directly to the sanitary sewer. Where it connects to the sewer, there must be a space between the discharge line and the sewer pipe. This is called an air gap. The gap prevents water in the sewer from entering the softener discharge, which could otherwise end up in your drinking water system. There are connections available that provide the necessary air gap, such as the one shown. Air gaps must be at least twice the diameter of the supply line. So, if you have a 1 inch diameter drain line from the softener, the air gap must be at least 2 inches. Shown is a picture of a drain line without an air gap. Check no if any waste drain line does not have an air gap. If you are watching this video series for the first time, please continue to Tutorial 4, which covers Section F, Distribution and Plumbing System.